Okay, let's see if we can summarize all the calculus physics relationships we've learned all in one slide. Uh, the calculus itself, how to take a derivative or how to take an integral is tricky, but pretty straightforward. Hopefully you know that by now. What people mess up on is, should I take a derivative or should I take an integral? And so if you do the opposite, that's not good. So you need to know these relationships. So let's summarize them. So first, let's look at kinematics. We have our position, our velocity, and our acceleration relationships. And when we first learned this, we learned going down, you took the slope. And up, you took the area. Well, now we're ready to graduate and talk about going down. We take the derivative. D down, D derivative. See how that works? And so if I go from position to velocity, I know I take the derivative. If I go from velocity to acceleration, I know I take the derivative. And then if I want to go back up from acceleration to velocity, I take the integral, or area under the curve, as we used to say, where you integrate. And then if I go up from velocity to position, I integrate as well. And so that means that the uh, velocity is dx dt, and the acceleration is dv dt. And so that's just connecting this operation with a mathematical statement, this operation with a mathematical statement, and then if I go up, I'm taking the integral. So the integral is integral of a dt, that's this, and then that is this. And we'll also talk about how you can check this with units. We've been emphasizing that all year. Slope is dividing the y axis by the x-axis, meters divided by seconds, a, that's meters per second, so I know slope derivative gives me velocity. Meters per second divided by seconds gives me the units of acceleration. Integration is area, so if I multiply meters per second squared times seconds, I get the units of velocity, and if I multiply meters per second times seconds, I get the units of position. This is another pair of relationships that we saw. We have impulse or momentum graphed on the y-axis. So that'd be Newton seconds or kilogram meter per second. If it's momentum, those are identical units. And then down below that, we have force versus time. So these are both, both versus time. And so if I go down, I take the derivative. If I go up, I take the integral. Again, the units can help you. It's a little trickier, but taking the derivative Newton seconds um, divided by seconds gives me Newtons, and Newton times seconds gives me Newton seconds. And you could also verify those, and I suggest you do if this was kilogram meters per second. Remember, a Newton is a kilogram meter per second squared, and so you can verify that as well. Then there was another pair of relationships with, uh, oh, then we can write this out. So force is the derivative of momentum. It's another way to write Newton's second law. And then impulse is the area under a force time graph. And so we did cover that in the first semester. Now we can use equations to generate what the area under the curve is if we need to. And so the last pair of relationships is potential energy or work versus x, and then force versus x. So notice. It's not force time, this is something different, right? And if we go down, we take the derivative uh, of potential energy, gives me the force, and then if I go up, the integral gives me uh, the potential energy. And so this we talked about in the first semester, the area under the curve, remember if this was a spring, the area was 1 half kx squared, now we can integrate and get these relationships. The one thing is kind of tricky is when you take the derivative of the potential energy and get force, there's a minus sign here. We talked about that in class. And so usually the minus signs involved in other operations people don't have trouble with. This one they do. And so you have to change the sign to get all the points. But hey, if you just did that, you'd be OK. And again, you can use the units to test things out. And so um, a joule uh, divided by meters, remember a joule is a Newton 
meter. So if I divide Newton meters by meters, I get Newtons. If I multiply Newton meters, I get a Newton meter, which is a joule. That's a little trickier to guess, that, to come up with. This is a little more straightforward over here, but if you work on it, you'll do fine. And so you might think about um, taking a, oh, you're tardy. Uh, you might think about taking a screen capture of this, or we'll go over this in class, use your notes, quiz yourself with this, make some flashcards, uh, whatever you want.